opportunities within these financial markets. When we talk about the financial markets, that's all markets. We have the stock market, we have the options market, the futures market, and the forex market. Before we get into those topics, Al, what's causing all this great volatility? We've seen some pretty big down days the past few weeks, great, but also some great up days. So it's getting that bull bear correlation going on. What's happening? Welcome to The Big Show. This is Investing with Confidence. I am your host, Joshua David, and we are happy to have you with us today. As always, I do have my good friend, and he is looking good today, Mr. Al Connix. And Al, how the heck are you doing today? Well, thank you for saying that. I, I am feeling fantastic. How about you? I'm doing really good. It's, it's, it's too bad only our YouTube show can only see you right now. Just Can you imagine what our listeners would, would think? Oh, it's scary. <laughs> it's, it's always great to be back, helping our listeners make better investing decisions. And Al, we have a packed packed show here today. We've had a lot of great movements in the market, a lot of great volatility. And we've been talking about these last couple of weeks. Things might be a little bit fishy out there. There's a lot of great things happening. The market's a little bit uncertain, but you know what that spells? Opportunity. Opportunity. And as long as the market's open. You're right. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about here today on Investing with Confidence, sponsored by Online Trading Academy, is the opportunities within these financial markets. When we talk about the financial markets, that's all markets. We have the stock market, we have the options market, the futures market, and the forex market. Before we get into those topics, Al, what's causing all this great volatility? We've seen some pretty big down days the past few weeks, great, but also some great up days. So it's getting that bull bear correlation going on. What's happening? Yeah, it's still there's some significant events going on that have kind of caused and will probably continue to cause a little bit of a tug of war. We still have the coronavirus issue we're dealing with. Uh, and the stimulus. So the Fed's getting ready to, you know, and has already started to pump trillions more into the economy. Uh, that's good for the economy. And, and people are looking at that down the road as being a positive thing. We're still a little concerned about the coronavirus. So there's a little tug of war going there and a little concerned about interest rates. But, you know, we just uh, we just had an anniversary. I don't know if you went out and celebrated or not. But I did not. What anniversary was The, the was anniversary that? was the end of the last bear market and the beginning of the bull market. Okay. We just came off of the fastest bear market that we've ever seen and the fastest return in a bull market that we've ever seen. Happy anniversary. Yeah, happy anniversary. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll be able to celebrate a year from now with, uh, you know, kind of the same thing, the continuation of that that bull market. But to us, it really doesn't make any difference whether it is a bull market, a bear market, or a flat market. They're just opportunities, different opportunities to use in those different market conditions. But, you know, we always talk about illiteracy, financial illiteracy, and how we're trying to combat that. Uh, and one of the things that we do to help people is, is this. And it really, we try to simplify it. And it is really simple, Josh. What we do is we teach people how to identify proper entry and exit techniques. And when you think about it, anytime you're getting into a trade or investment, there's two things you do. You get into it and you get out of it. And, and the important thing is knowing when to get in, when to get out. So by a proper entry, of course, we mean an entry that where you have a low risk and then the, you know, the, the odds of it moving in your favor being high. And a proper exit is where you are identifying you know, a profit potential and then being able to not only identify it, but to take that profit. And a lot of people ask, well, you know, is there some sort of a secret out there? Is there some kind of a magic bullet or a secret? It really isn't a secret. A lot of people will tell you that fundamentals are the way to do this. And a lot of people will tell you the technical indicators, learning how to use those. Well, we would say that neither one of those are any, anywhere close to a, a secret or magic bullet. What is really important, and this is what we concentrate on, the only reason price goes up, Josh, is because there are more buyers and sellers. And the only reason price goes down is because there are more sellers than buyers. It's just that basic concept of supply and demand that's alive and well in these financial markets. And that's something that really can't be argued. Uh, in, in my, when I'm talking about more buyers than sellers that move the price of something, I'm not talking about me going out and buying 100 shares or something or you and me combining our money and going out and buying or selling mm -hmm. something. Uh, it's the, the big institutions, the big players, Wall Street, uh, the, the hedge fund managers. And just to confirm that, about 90% of the activity is from the big money, the smart money, the institutions. Right. Yeah, and what does that mean? If, if they're controlling, say, 80, 90% of, of the trades – 
and they have to have somebody on the opposite side for them to function, uh, that means that oftentimes the public is on the other side of those trades. Yeah. And you do not want to be trading against them. These people are very smart. They have sophisticated uh, technology that they use. They spend millions or tens of millions of dollars on data and research that we either don't get or get too late. So the, the key is not to try to compete with them. The key is really just to, to do what they're doing, follow in their footsteps. Yep. And, you know, what if there was an investment strategy that with a, a high degree of, of accuracy could identify in advance where they were buying and selling? Would, would that be helpful? Think about it. It's, it's the price that you pay that really is the critical thing. Price, whether you're, you're, you're buying something or actually price if you're selling something. Because that's going to determine the quality of your protection, your risk management, and the quality or the amount of profit that you you can achieve. So price becomes the most important thing. And that price really is impacted by and influenced by the institutional activity. They're buying and selling. They do it with such large amounts of money and such large numbers that they have the ability to move something but because of the way they have to do things, because of the, the fact they use so much, we can identify in advance when incremental parts of a trade are going to be made because that's how they have to do it. Yeah, and that really comes down to understanding how a price chart really works, how um, a candlesticks on a, on a price chart actually form. And then as Al is talking about trading with the smart money, is following those footprints when institutions, the big banks, the smart money, we call it, when they're moving millions and billions of dollars, sometimes trillions of dollars per mm -hmm. day in the markets, those leave a footprint on a price chart. And price is actually the number one thing that drives the market. It's not, it's not anything else. It's actually price, right. which is actually the law of supply and demand. Correct. There's more demand, something price will go up. There's more supply than some, uh, something price will go down. That's, that's not going to change, kind of like gravity. Gravity is not going to change. If I throw this cup of coffee in the air, this hot cup of coffee here, and, and Al, it, it's, it might go over your head. It's probably going to come down and burn you, right? I won't do that because I'm a nice I, guy. You know what? I really appreciate that. I, I wasn't planning on having my head burned today. There you go. But, but gravity does, does not change. Neither does supply and demand. Al, I want to talk a little bit more in the next segment about education, right? There is a difference between types of education, especially in the financial markets. Correct. There's education and then there's skills to build. So we're going to talk about that coming up next. We will be right back.